Okay. That's cool. So good to have a backup plan. Um, so what is metamedia? Have, has anybody heard of this concept, metamedia? Um, metamedia is, is the idea with, with computers that, um, that, that they can con contain all forms of past media. And, and that often is, is what, uh, that's what most people use them for. Like uh, email is, is basically um, analog letters that just happen, happen to be transmitted um, by data. And uh, YouTube is, is a kind of new form of, of, of TV or film. Um, but but it's because it's contained in, within the computer, then, um, then you can, um, then you can connect with everybody in the world and connect with all, all other media. Um, so, so it represents all, all these past forms of media, but, but it also represents and can contain all, all future forms of media. Um, and, and games, games is a big part of that, like ever since Pong, um, it's a, a new form of, of media that, um, that can be contained in this thing, and um, yeah. So, with with services like um, uh, Twitter and Flickr and YouTube, all these Web 2.0 kind of um, services, you have you have these ways that that anybody can put their kind of old media out out into the world, and anybody anybody can see. Um, the things that you can create because these services make it easy. Um, but, uh, but making games and inventing like really new kinds of media um, still takes a lot of code and um, the, the barrier to entry is a lot higher to invent these new forms of media. And that's part of what uh, I'm trying to lower that barrier to, of entry. Um, so so one thing that, that software is, is uh, tools for getting things done. So people want, people want to create things, they want to share things, and, and software helps them do that. Um, so this is my grandfather. I think this was taken in 1947, and, um, and my grandma. Um, but they had, a, they had a really nice relationship, and, um, and he was a carpenter, and he built things by hand a lot and um, built all the furniture in my house and cabinets and stuff and was really talented with his hands. Um, but later in his life, um, got into computers. And if anybody is as uh, older than, I don't know, you probably recognize this, um, this, uh, this screen when you win solitaire. Um, but the connection to my grandfather is um, that this is, this is basically how he learned to, to use a computer, to use a mouse, because I don't know if Microsoft did this on purpose or if it was just lucky design, but um, Solitaire teaches, teaches you how to, how to click, how to click and hold and drag. All these things are not, are not innate knowledge. Like if you give a two-year-old a mouse, um, the, the connection between what this is and what's going on here is difficult. Um, and, but my grandfather got it and, and he, figured out, um, he figured out the computer and not just solitaire but also um, making, uh, making frames and prints from my grandmother's paintings. So like she wanted to make cards to send to her friends with her paintings and, and he figured out how um, and he used, he didn't have Photoshop. He, he looked at the tools that he had in his computer, the tool, the, the utilities that came with his printer, um, MS Paint, and somehow figured out how, how to use those for something they weren't designed for, but, but he had a job that he wanted to get done. So he looked at the tools and, and figured out eventually um, how to get it done. Uh, he showed me this, he was asking my advice um, for a better way to do it, and it, it kind of blew my mind, but I, I, I couldn't tell him, like, well, you should just get Photoshop, and I, I was actually really impressed that he had put together these 
um, kind of crappy tools to, to get something done that he wanted to get done. Um, so it would, be, it would be nice if, if, if you could have um, simpler tools and, and put them together easier. Um, so yeah, the Solitaire taught my grandfather how to use the mouse. Um, and now, now we have touch screens. And now um, one-year-old, two-year-old, they can, they can get the concept. They can, they can swipe through photos and look at them. And um, Elo knows, my, my girl knows that if she clicks Elmo, then she can watch Elmo videos. And um, so she doesn't know how to use a mouse. But now, now because uh, touch screens make accessing media that much more immediate, you're actually um, touching the thing that, that you want. Um, so, so I want to bring some of that UX, uh, user experience design, to making software. Um, making software now is very, very much, uh, very code centered, and um, let me not get ahead of myself. So, if if you take apart um, uh, a cell phone, for example. Uh, this this icon is is an icon for the App Store, and it's kind of this this hard, shiny gemstone-looking thing. Um, actually, now it's the design is more flat, but anyways, uh, it, it's kind of similar to a smartphone. Like you, you have this hard, um, hard, shiny thing that if you take it apart, then um, you're not going to be able to do much with that unless you're an electrical engineer. And the same way, like if you take apart an app from the App Store, you you see a bunch of a bunch of files, um, maybe, but you're not going to be able to do much with that. And so I'd really like to make a way that when you take apart an app, you can see you can see what's going on. Um, so so the way that I'm doing that is with uh, flow-based programming. So I want to show a little bit of of that. So this is my thesis project, and it's available for everybody to use and um, online here, mimu.org. And um, so when you um, when you get to the website and you click there, the, the first thing you see is is this app. Um, and, and I'm still calling these things apps, even though they're not um, polished things that you would sell in a store. Um, but when you um, when you allow the camera here, um, so you have basically you have these three three modules for this app. Um, one is a button, uh, one is a, a camera, and then this one is is animation. So if you if you press this button, then you um, then you send frames to the animation. So that's like making a flip book or, yeah. So you, you can do stop motion animation here um, like that. Um, then you can compress it to a GIF and then, and then save that, save that to the public web that you can, that you can share that GIF with your friends or, or whatever. Um, there's there's the link to it, so if you you can share that link. Um, so the reason that I made this my first um, the first example is is this is how I was kind of got into digital media when I was a kid. Uh, we had this we had this webcam uh, called a Connectix Quick Cam, and this is the the printer port that it plugged into, and it also plugged into the keyboard for power and. Um, it was like one of the first one of the first webcams, um, but it didn't come. I didn't have any stop motion software, but I figured out how to put together the program for connecting images and saving a bunch of images to my hard drive, and then like how to how to compress that into a movie um, to to save and to share. And it was a pain, but but I was inspired to do it. Um, so I, I kind of 
was creative with the tools, but kind of in spite of the tools. The, the tools weren't, weren't really helping me, um, but I figured it out anyway. So that's why um, I, I wanted to make that process a lot easier here. Um, and in addition, um, so, so this is the, ba the first example that you get. Um, but you can, but you can look in the library here, and there's there's a lot more of these modules that you can drag in, um, and and change how the app works. So um, one, um, while I was writing the thesis, my my daughter was born, and this um, this is a. I was really curious what happens when I leave the room because she was moving slowly, but if I left the room, then she would be totally somewhere else on the bed. And so I was really curious what happens. Um, so I was able to take this thing that I was working on. So I was making little stop motion animations. Um, but then I made this, uh, like a metronome. So I'll just, I'll just use the default now. It's, um, it'll capture two frames per second. So I'm going to connect that to the same, the same place there and um, start the metronome now. So you could, you could make this a lot, a lot slower if you wanted to do a stop motion of sunrise or you know, leave, it, leave it running all day and um, see the shadows move across the city or whatever. Um, so, so in that, in that, just dragging, dragging this from the library, I turned this app that was made for stop motion animation and turned it into a time lapse app. So it's it's basically like uh, that's the idea of 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 having smaller tools that you can put together to make to make these things instead of like instead of a huge app that that only does one thing, then you have small tools that work well, and then if you can just put them together to, to make the thing that you want to show. Um, so I can show some more demos with, with Mimo first. Um, yeah, this, this one was inspired by a talk I heard from a designer, and he was talking about his process of, um, of making generative art, so making these patterns with code. Um, but he had this really difficult process for, for extracting the colors from an image. It involved Photoshop and um, going through all these dialogues and copying and pasting a lot of stuff. So I was thinking, well, I can make that. I can make that one module in um, in Mimo, and then and then be able to use that that palette um, to make a pattern. So this, the pattern in the background, is made from colors in this photo, in this photo. And you have more examples of that too. Another thing that, that I'm really interested in with this is, is making it easier to go from digital to analog and back. Um, so, so I really like doing things that are hand on, hands on. Um, so, so this is a, an app that I made that, that you can take two or three pictures and then, then make one of these paper things that's different depending on where you view it. Um, so I made this like uh, kind of um, really simple design, but um, kind of a tutorial here with with how this works. Um, but then, because because it's a web app, um, you can actually um, yeah you can you can embed the app itself into the into the direction so if you wanted to make one of these you could you could read the directions and then 
and then see like and then actually use the app to do it. Then you have to print it off and, and fold them together um, to make something like this. But that, that's one thing I really like about, about working with JavaScript and working on the web, that, that it can be immediate that you share. You can share the output of these things. And then you could, you could also share like if you change, if you change how something works. Um, so yeah, this, this was another like um, a workshop I did with some friends. We made an animated alphabet, um, and then you can then you can uh, edit the HTML to put these together. Um, so everybody everybody took a different letter of the alphabet, and we made this animated alphabet. Um, yeah. I'll show one more, see if it works, yeah. So, so this it is getting more complicated, obviously. Um, but this uh, is, is using video feedback, or the idea of video feedback. Like when you, when you point a camera at a screen, I could actually, well, I won't do it now. Um, but so this is starting with, with, um, with just a rectangle. And then I'm, I'm making it smaller and rotating it and then putting it into itself. And when I first, when I first plugged these, these ones together and then it actually worked and it was fast, I, I was really um, surprised and impressed. I started this project uh, in, in like 2011. And at that time, like uh, Chrome and Firefox and to some extent, Safari and Internet Explorer have been catching up, but but they're kind of in, in this friendly war to to increase performance of JavaScript a lot, and so so there was as I was working on the project, there was all these new APIs, um, like like the webcam getting that directly, um, all these things were were coming up through the web web standards and and becoming uh, standards in the browser, so I could just plug them in. So a lot of a lot of what I'm doing here is is using the HTML canvas, and uh, yeah, I was really pleasantly surprised when this when this was running fast, like 60 frames a second for this. Um, and yeah, there's there's more examples uh, in Tumblr. I'll, I'll get to this stuff in a little bit. Um, This is this is some glitch art. I have some some modules that will take a JPEG and just change some random data in it. Um, so this was a project to make glitch selfies. It was inspired by another project um, by a guy that I met online, and then and then we did some art projects together. Um, which light? Um, this is some more video feedback stuff and. Um, yeah, messing with animation and colors and loops. Um, and it's really nice to see, um, to see what other people have done with this. So that, this is why I made the Tumblr, to make it easier for other people to, to submit their stuff. Um, so you can see the, the animation that they made and then also the, the app. Um, the, the source code, it's really easy to share share the source code once you make it. Um, yeah, I won't wait for that to load. Um, yeah, this guy was figuring out some really cool stuff. Um, that's one of my favorite things about the project is, is um, like I've been making, I've been making these these modules that um, that go together in different ways, um, but the ways that you can combine them is huge. And every time I add a new module, the the possibilities kind of expand exponentially. So so seeing seeing what other people make um, is always really interesting because there's 
there's things that I, I had no idea that was possible or, or yeah, no, um, no clue. So I, I really like that. If you want to submit stuff to here, I would appreciate it. Um, this was uh, projection mapping that I did in, um, in Stockholm. So I had a, a sphere texture, and I, don't know, I was making the, the eyeball, eyeball colors move around. And then there was the camera image going into the pupil. And then it was also looking around. It was projected onto a, a big weather balloon kind of thing. But there's no way that I would have been able to write all that code in one day. Now, this was part of an art hack day, which is like three days to, to make a work of art and then, um, and then exhibit it on the last day. So I wouldn't have been able to do it in that amount of time if I had started from scratch. But, but kind of having this, this toy box of things to play with and put together, um, I was able to, to put that project together. Um, oops. There's one more I wanted to show. So this was this is another app that my friend Matthias made uh, last summer when when Deal with It was a thing. So if you ever wanted to do your own Deal with It GIF, you can you can do it with this app here. So um, so that was my thesis that that I was working on um, and still working on a little bit. Um, but now I'm doing this full time. So Flowhub is 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 similar to Mimu, but if, if Mimu is like the toy box, then maybe Flowhub is more like a toolbox. So it's a little bit lower level in code. Um, but but you're able to build software in the same in the same kind of way. And um, and eventually I hope Mimu and Flowhub will will kind of become one thing. Um, so let's see an example here. Okay, good. It loaded. So the interface is different. Um, we had we we have a, a team now working on this um, designer and and a few developers. Um, so so we've had some some time to like. Um, to really look at look at the interface of um, this flow ba flow based programming, and um, so yeah, this is the the graph graphing interface itself is is rewritten from scratch, and so there's a lot more that this can do um, than Mimu, because every time you write something over again, you get to do all the things you wanted to do the first time. Um, so. Uh, one of the things that this data flow system has um, that uh, that is a little bit unique i think I think some other ones have it, but it has this zoomable user interface um, so you can see um, when you zoom out then you get a view uh, the of the whole the whole shape of the code um, but then you can zoom in and get more information about anything. Like, um, so when you zoom in, you can see what the name of each of the ports. Um, if you have some initial value going into the port, um, you can see that there. Um, and so you can and you can zoom out and, and zoom in pretty easily. It's it's kind of a unique user user interface. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but then. Um, once you get used to it, then you then you try try to zoom like that everywhere. Um, so, so I like that. Um, it's it's been fun to build that. Um, yeah. So a little bit about how this how this works. So this um, this animation in the preview pane here is is built with these. Um, so. So you have you're making a a time a time um, object here, 
and then you're sending that that time which is a, a timestamp you're sending that to these these math operations which turn it into the rotation of of each of these elements so uh, so it's pretty straightforward like uh, the the purple the pink line here represents the hour hand and the green the green line is the data for the minute hand and the red line is the data for the <coughs> second hand um, another thing you can do here that you can't do in Mimu is uh, when you click on the any any of the of the edges or any of the lines then you can see the data um, traveling through them so that helps with debugging um, and it's pretty different than than debugging like um, yeah traditional debugging because because we can just click on that click anywhere in the graph and then see what see the data that's coming through there um, and what else is here let's see so this um this is a little bit more complicated example um, first let's see if it works so this is using some webgl filters um that a guy called Brian Tills made. Um, it's a library called seriously.js. Um, so there's there's a few built-in ones there. Uh, uh, and, and you can change these, change some of the settings for the for these filters with the slider. Um, Let's see. So we can look at this part of the graph. Um, so this is a, a hue rotation. So basically, like if you if you rotate a hue wheel, then everything red kind of becomes green, and vice versa. So you can change your color there. But the way that this is wired, um, so this is the, the slider element. So you get that from the page. Um, and then here you're listening for, for when that slider element moves. And then you're sending that, uh, that value. I think this slider goes from 0 to 1. Um, yeah, so when we. When we slide that, then you can see the the values there. That's pretty small, but um, so then we're uh, oh yeah, we're we're sending that directly here to the to the hue that that changes the hue of the video. Um, but yeah, so so one nice thing one nice thing about this. Um, Compared to uh, like traditional traditional coding, I'll show this one is that when you see when you see this uh, as opposed to a directory full of source code files, um, like there you can see a directory structure, maybe you have some idea, but here you can actually see the shape of each of these programs um, from from like this far away. It you can you can um, you can kind of if you made these programs, then you then you get to recognize kind of the shape of the code, and that's that's different. Like when I saw this view for the first time, like when we got this view working, like that was a, a light bulb moment. That that's something you can't can't really do when you look at a project on GitHub. You um, um, you don't you don't see the the shape of the code, and here you can see how how data is flowing through the whole the whole thing. Um, so this is some interesting stuff that I've been working on just this week. Um, we'll have to see if I can keep my face. 
Um, yeah, I wanted to get this uh, get this live, um, but this this library is not online quite yet. I wanted to do it by this talk, um, but it'll it'll definitely be there in the next couple of days. But um, this is a a library that I found that that tracks the the points on your face, so you can use um, like if you had if you had another kind of app like a drawing app or something, then you could then you could um, attach the paintbrush to to where your nose is and then move move around like that. Like um, there's fun stuff you can do with there. Like this is this is the kind of a, a mask that I made with that face tracking. Um, it works better with without glasses. But anyways, this was a library that I saw online, and I saw a demo, and um, um, it's it's a really nice thing about working on the web and working with JavaScript is that I can ba basically take all that person's work and and put it into this one box here, um, where where I just I send it an image, and then I get the points of the face out. And can do anything with those points, um, so so I really like that about this project, like being able to take take people's open source work and 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 put it into boxes that I can play with here. Um, so I'm, I'm running out of time now, um, but if anybody has questions, I'd like to take some questions. Yeah. Oh, we need a microphone. I did. Oh, hi. Uh, hi, Willen Logo Alto University. So first of all, very cool demo. I really liked it. Um, but um, so every time when someone says, um, Let's make apps. Uh, so so let, let's make something that would allow to make apps without programming. And uh, I mean, this has been tried already for years and years. Mm -hmm. um, the concept is always the same. Boxes that you connect with, with strings, right? Or, or with lines. So, so I, mean, I mean, this concept has existed, at least I know it, for like seven or eight years. No, it, it, 69 was the first. Or even, yeah. 1969. And the thing is, like, your demo is really cool. And I think this is, like, the most advanced demo of this concept that I've seen. But what I'm seeing, it's still the same limitations. Still the same things that if you want to go more complex, you know, you, you just run into some limitations. So what, what I'm sort of thinking is that, uh, OK, so. Um, Maybe this 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 idea or, or to to create apps without programming, maybe there should be something else, some some kind of like other approach, rather than this. Um, and 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 then again, like could, could you could you sort of uh, maybe talk a little bit about like okay, so so uh, what what do you think your sort of implementation of this concept, what what, what is really the new thing there? And and what what do you see it like? Um, I mean, you, you showed some very nice things like creating visuals, etc. But but I mean, uh, do you see some kind of like productivity apps mm -hmm. or s something that is like more, let's say, for productive work? So, anyways, so two questions is like uh, maybe there should be some kind of a different concept mm -hmm. of creating apps without programming, and then like so what kind of uh, users yeah. Would see for this yeah. Yeah. It has okay. so it has been used a lot, um, or the concept has has kind of come around a bunch of times, and and part of my thesis was looking at the older versions, and and part of our our design now is is that, um, but so so we're not really saying like do it without programming. <coughs> so, like in here, you you immediately can get to the the code view, and um, and change change that if you need to uh, make new components, whatever. Um, so so that's one thing that we designed in this like from the start that that 
it, it's not without programming. It's just like if you want to write the code for every module and then and then put them together here, like like you can do that. You can make make new components and and save them to a project. Um, you can you can see how how any component works just by opening its code there. Um, so, yeah, obviously, like we're coders, we like code. Um, I guess I guess there is there is kind of always that commercial pitch that everybody's gonna be able to make apps, but um, my my thesis and and the reason that I'm involved in this project to to take it further is is really just about uh, like for me it's about playing playing with code and um, but in doing that like and and now working on a team like it there there is something really powerful about like when when um, the guy that I'm working with shows me the the server side API stuff that I'm that I'm calling from my client side stuff, and he shows it to me and it's in this graph and he says, okay, like you call it here and it goes through there, like it, it's it's still a powerful concept. Like I don't think I don't think like everybody's gonna be um, everybody's gonna be making apps, but I. I I guess the design that I want to make is that if you want if you want this app to do something a little bit different and you have the motivation then you can open it up and see this instead of like tons of text based code and also um, I forgot about these slides so so part of the the big idea is combining metaphors so like the data flow view here is is good for certain things but it's definitely not for everything um, like when you when you go inside of these boxes, then um, then then you want to be able to like see the code that's inside there, and, and kind of go between those seamlessly. Um, but I also want uh, other metaphors to be there. So you have code, you have data flow, um, and and this is something that I was that I was trying to get in for this. This is who knows what this is. Raise your hand. If you can see from there, <laughs> that okay, this is a timeline. It, it's used in a lot of um, applications, uh, After Effects, um, Flash. I learned a lot from Flash, um, but but timelines really make sense if you have linear media and you wanna you wanna trigger something at certain times, or you you wanna like have or you wanna build up um, a song, audio effects visual effects and connect them to some linear media like timeline is is a really helpful tool so so we're going to put that in into the data flow as well like so when you when you need that view um, then then like each one of these tracks will be sending out numbers that you, that you can plug in to your to your um, to your data flow part here so it's not it's not like Data flow is is the the answer. It's not like that's that's our bible. It's it's really about taking the correct metaphor um, for the problem. So if your problem is is this implementing a an algorithm, then code is the right tool. Like you need to you probably need to know code or um, yeah know how to use code to to make that algorithm really work. But if you want to see the overall flow of data through your program, then then this view makes sense. So, and this this timeline view um, represents this. So this is how I do animation now, and I still I do I do this kind of animation in code, and it it works, but it's it it sucks. Like it's not the right <laughs> it's not the right tool for the job compared like this is the same. The same information, but a lot easier to see see what's going on and edit things and and, and tweak things there. Yeah. Um, so actually, follow up. Um, so so basically, the way you describe it, it's it's a visualization tool for programmers. So when when I'm sort of thinking um, still this idea of you know creating apps without programming. If you think, for example, about Instagram, right? So what was the cool thing about it? What was the 
huge success was that you know you have a picture right and you can very easily apply filters maybe you know like something 10 years before that or whatever you would have to go to a professional who knows how to use photoshop and you know you give him the picture and he does something with it applies filters or whatever so so but then came the instagram and you know it's so easy right so you take a picture just apply a filter and it, immediately it creates something so this is kind of like um, I think this kind of simplicity is is still missing in this concept. Mm -hmm. So, so like I said, I, I think if if this uh, simplicity is not achieved within this con uh, concept, then it will be a visualization tool for programmers. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. But very cool demo. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I guess like Instagram is is one example. Like. Uh, Maybe, maybe it does video now, but but it didn't do video before, and and you can't make. I'm pretty sure you can't make animated gifs with Instagram. So like, my idea is that like, if that you would be able to open Instagram and see the filters there, um, and like we have we have filters in here now, and like so we would be able able to make some preset filters like that, but then then pipe that into your stop motion application. So you can make a GIF that also has the Instagram filters. Um, and so that's what open source lets us do. And I want, I want more people to be able to do that. So can you make a recursive program? So if you have a module that does something, let's say adds the face recognition, can you take another app and then use the previous app as a source for that? Yeah. Yeah, um, so it's, I, I can see if this, this would work here. But um, if you have some, you can um, select them and then, uh, make a new graph. Actually, I actually don't, um, I haven't used this much, but um, so that just took took those six things that I that I made there and put them into one uh, one graph here. So then to get that get to them, oh, this might be some demo effect bug there, but um, yeah. So now those uh, now those exist here. So, yeah. Any more questions? So, in, in uh, digital logic, it was common to have schematics, or like a schematic view. Um, when, even when they started making uh, programmable digital logic circuits, like uh, it's called FPGAs. And so, they would have tools that look, I guess, kind of like this, because it, it was these big schematics with different blocks, different modules that would be like, you know, multiplier, addition, you know, so on. Mm -hmm. um, but recently, it's been moving away from that towards text-based programming with, uh, it's called VHDL. So I'm wondering whether you feel like you're uh, trying to oppose the, <laughs> this, I, I guess it's, it's the, they they came from the other direction because originally you know you drew circuits you drew digital logic circuits on paper and you know you put them together physically <laughs> whereas programming has always been a uh, like a ephemeral thing you know it's it's been always inside the computer so do you think that you're sort of bringing you're you're bringing these two things together you think you're um, yeah, that, that, that's an interesting example because when you have like a simple electronic schematic, you can you can see what it looks like on a map. But if you have an FPGA or or a processor and you look at this schematic for that, it would it would like take up the room, right? So I don't know. Like it definitely makes sense that um, I, th I think it is like layers of ab abstraction. And there's potential, there's potential that if you, um, that you could 
you could put these graphs into code. So there could be like, yeah, code in the components and then um, graphs and other code. Um, but it just depends on how complex you're doing stuff. Like if making apps that respond to user input and stuff, I think that level of programming um, is, there's, there's not, there's not very good tools for that, and like that's that's really our target with this. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like the idea of having you know your your inputs because like wh when you when you're doing like an event based programming, then you have actual inputs, you have events, and then so that that actually flows, where, but it doesn't apply to all to all programs. Yeah, I agree. So I might be out of time. I'm not sure. Any last questions? There's um, one exam one more example. So um, Part of what, why I got into data flow programming was using Quartz Composer and Pure Data. And we use both of those in Media Lab a lot. Um, but Quartz Composer is very visual and Pure Data is very audio oriented. Um, so now, now like in the browser we have, we have Canvas and we have WebGL and we can do visual programming. And now we also have Web Audio that can do that can do audio programming. Um, so this is a visual. Whoa. <laughs> so this is a theremin. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Anyways, so so this shows like that you can have both um, both a visual program and an audio program in one graph. Um, that that's really hard to do with with other tools. Um, so yeah, uh, my friend Wilson in Brazil made this made this demo, and he's working on these um, libraries with uh, Google Summer of Code for us. So shout out to Wilson. So I guess that's it. Woo!